Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at an absolute beastly laptop from MSI known as the Vector GP76. So what we have here is a 360 hertz 17.3 inch display. And the main reason I really wanted to get my hands on this unit is because it's actually powered by the new Alder Lake Intel mobile CPUs. We've got the 12700H in this unit. We've got 14 cores and 20 threads, 6 performance cores, 8 efficiency cores, and I'm really looking forward to seeing how this thing performs. Overall, really nice design. It's definitely on the larger side, given that we have a 17.3 inch display on this unit. And the keyboard is a Steel Series per key RGB keyboard. And most of the time when you get a laptop like this, you get a single zone, maybe dual or quad zone RGB keyboard. With this, each key can be programmed, and you can set it up to look however you'd like. Personally, I really like the look of the display on this laptop, but it's actually a little odd. We've got a 17.3 inch display, 360 hertz, but it's only 1080p. I was really thinking that this would be a 1440p display right out of the box, because with the power this laptop's packing, it would do some really decent 1440p gaming. Taking a look at the I.O. on this unit, over here on the right hand side we have two Type-A USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports. Moving over to the left hand side we have another full size Type-A 3.2. I was hoping that this was Thunderbolt 4, but unfortunately it's just a full function 3.2 Type-C port. And we also have our 3.5mm audio jack. Moving around back, from the left to the right we've got a mini display 1.4 port. 2.5 gigabit ethernet port, full size HDMI. Personally, I haven't seen this connector from MSI yet, so I'm thinking it's a new one, but it does come with a 280 watt power supply because when it comes to these Alder Lake CPUs, they can definitely pull some wattage. When it comes to the specs, like I mentioned, we've got that all new Intel 12700H, 14 cores, 20 threads, and we get a max boost of 4.7 gigahertz on the six performance cores. This did come pre-installed with 32 gigabytes of DDR4 running in dual channel at 3200 megahertz. When it comes to the GPU, this is rocking an RTX 3070 Ti with 8 gigabytes of VRAM. Keep in mind this is the laptop version, so it's not as powerful as the desktop 3070 Ti. 17.3 inch, 360 hertz IPS display at 1080p. We do have Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.2, a 2 terabyte M.2 SSD, and this did come out of the box with Windows 11 installed. In this video, we're going to run some benchmarks, test out some AAA PC games, and a little bit of emulation. But before we get started, I do want to mention that Micro Center was kind enough to send this over for review. So this video is sponsored by Micro Center. I want to give them a big shout out for sending this over for review. If you're not familiar with Micro Center and you're a tech enthusiast, then you really should be. They have real brick and mortar stores that you can walk into and put your hands on the product before you purchase it. They've got stores in California, Colorado, Georgia, Illinois, Kansas, Massachusetts, Maryland, Michigan, Minnesota, Missouri, New Jersey, New York, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Texas, and Virginia. So if you're interested in checking them out, I will leave a link to their website in the description. So jumping right into some gameplay, we have Forza Horizon 5, Extreme Settings, and obviously we're at 1080p. Really wish this was a 1440p display because we got a lot that we can do with this 3070 Ti and this 12700H. But at 1080p, this should be able to run basically anything at Ultra Settings. And with Forza Horizon 5, Extreme Settings, 1080p, we're getting an average of 98 FPS. Next thing I did was run a few benchmarks, and first up we have Geekbench 5 coming in with a single core of 1,624, multi 11,592. Not bad at all for a mobile chip, but remember this is in its stock form factor. If you installed Intel Tuning Utility and turned that boost time up, you could get a bit more out of the single and multi with this unit. Next thing I did was run Cinebench R23. We got a total multi-core score of 16,496. And, you know, with 14 cores and 20 threads here, I expected this to kind of thermal throttle with Cinebench. This is an extreme test. While you're gaming, you're not going to see these kind of temps. One of those cores hit 97 degrees Celsius, and I kind of figured it would, given the wattage that this thing can pull. Moving over to 3D Mark Firestrike. Total score here, 25,381. And finally, we have Time Spy with a 10,874. I mean, just taking a look at these benchmarks here, we know we're gonna get some really good 1080p gaming performance, but we're still gonna jump into it and test a bunch of games. Here's God of War, Ultra, 1080p, no DLSS on, because we're only at 1080p and we do have more than enough power, but we could kind of get these same frame rates up to 1440p out of HDMI or that mini display port if you have a monitor that supports those resolutions. 
But God of War at 1080p ultra settings on this system gives us an average of 94 FPS. Elden Ring is another one I wanted to test here. We're at very high 1080p and this is going to run at 60. Going into this I had a good feeling it was going to handle it at very high 1080p and you'll see that afterburner counter up there, the FPS counter, dip into the 59s. But uh, overall, this is something you'd never notice. This will give you a constant 60 with maxed out settings at 1080p. Definitely had to throw The Witcher 3 in here real quick. We're at ultra settings, 1080p, and we're getting an average of 112 FPS out of this system, just like it is ultra settings. So yeah, I mean, if you want to play Witcher 3, no issues at all. I always like to throw at least one fighting game in the mix. We have MK11, maxed out settings, 1080p, a game like this, and basically any fighting game maxed out will run on this at 1080p. I'm pretty sure that we'd be able to go up to 1440p out of HDMI or that mini display port with this one. And finally, for the PC games, we have Halo Infinite, very high settings, 1080p. We're getting over 100 FPS average, actually 107 FPS on average with this game at very high settings. Totally playable here, feels really good on this display. Now the last thing I wanted to test here was some high-end emulation. We're going to go with RPCS3 and one of those games that kind of gives lower-end CPUs a run for its money. This emulator here with certain games like God of War and Skate 3 here definitely love those extra cores and threads and a high clock. And to tell you the truth, I really didn't think we'd have any issues with the 12700H. 14 cores, 20 threads with a max clock on those performance cores up to 4.7, you're going to be able to run this just fine. There's still some games with this emulator that need some optimization, so like God of War 3 would be out of the question on this system at 60 FPS, but if you wanted to run it at 30, it'll do it all day. This chip here definitely powers through emulation. And seeing how well it's running with this one here, the lower end stuff is going to be good to go on this chip. So there was actually one last thing I wanted to test. Now, when it comes to my personal laptop, I usually have it sitting plugged into a bigger monitor, usually a 4K monitor. And obviously when I'm on the go, I use the built-in screen. When I'm at the house, I've got a bigger monitor to work with. Right here, we've got a 4K 60 Hertz display plugged in through HDMI. And I wanted to see if we could at least run Forza Horizon 5 Ultra Settings 4K. And here it is. So we're at 4K ultra settings with no resolution scale on whatsoever. I haven't seen it go under 60. I mean, we're right there at the edge. I'm getting an average of 64 FPS out of this game at 4K ultra. And if I enabled the frame rate lock or just turned V-Sync on, given that I have a 60 Hertz display, it's going to run like this all day. It looks absolutely amazing at ultra settings. And this laptop can handle 4K gaming. It's not going to do every single game at ultra settings 4K, but there are some that will run really, really well. Overall, the GP76 is a great performer, and you know I expected it to perform really well. With that 3070 Ti and that new Alder Lake 12700H, you should be getting some really great performance, especially at 1080p. So like I mentioned, this video is sponsored by Micro Center, and I want to give them another big shout out. And if you're a new customer, they actually have a coupon right now over on their website. I'll leave a link for it in the description. You're going to sign up with your email and name, and they're going to send you a coupon for a free in-store 128GB USB 3.1 flash drive and a free 128GB micro SD card. So if you're interested in picking these free items up, link for this is down below. I'd definitely like to do some more testing with this 12700H, so if there's anything else you want to see running on this system, like it is, even with the built-in XE graphics, just let me know in the comments below. I can create another quick video uh, just to show you how it performs like that. So that's going to wrap it up for this one. Really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in learning more about the MSI Vector GP76, I will leave links to Micro Center's website in the description, and I will have at least one more video coming up with this laptop. So like I mentioned, if there's anything else you want to see running on this chipset, let me know in the comments below. But that's it for this one, and like always, thanks for watching.